So I want to get a, a little bit of a layer deeper. I know we've covered some of this um, as far as the role of a, of a pen test. If you look at it in the entire kind of security mix, and I'll pause right there and I'll, and I'll just make another comment uh, to carry on what Kirk said. You know, this is the advertisement. We appreciate Juniper Networks for actually sponsoring this event. Uh, it's very helpful in getting the, 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 the voice out into the community and they made this possible. So I really appreciate them uh, participating in it. But so Kyle, when you look at the overall security mix, where does, how does a pen test fit into that? Yeah, I think um, kind of piggybacking what Brian just said, I really think the primary um, you know, purpose and value you're gonna get out of a penetration test is validating the security and network tools, as well as people that an organization has implemented um, basically to defend itself. Um, you know, uh, you could have best of breed stuff like Kirk was talking about and some new IPS and IDS stuff like Brian was talking about implemented in your network. But um, even though you have those tools and you have people that are probably supposed to follow some procedures that uh, revolve around, you know, instant response or, or utilizing those tools, how do you really know that any of those things are operating like you need them to be um, when a real attack is occurring? So a penetration test can help you validate that um, you know you either do or do not have the right tuning in place or the right procedures in place. Um, additionally, uh, you know, kind of also it gets thrown penetration tests get thrown into the security mix um, when it comes to identifying attack paths. Um, one thing we'll do during penetration tests, uh, based on the goals of the test, of course, is kind of go through different paths that we see on the network. And when I say paths, I mean uh, different ways that we're going to first drop into the network and then pivot throughout the network, possibly you know, gaining privilege, accessing sensitive data, eventually moving to some point where we have a large amount of that access. Um, so kind of going from nothing to something to everything is kind of an attack path. And what a penetration test can do is highlight the various attack paths that exist in a network and present those to you know, the defenders of the organization um, to interpret as they will. Um, sometimes, you know, we might go through an entire attack path and talk with the defenders afterwards and they'll be like, yep, we saw, you know, everything you were doing from point A to point B, uh, all the way to point Z. And, you know, uh, we were happy with how our tools were operating. We were happy with the logs and alerts we were generating. And it's awesome to see that what you were doing was actually alerting us because um, that validates that the alerts and things that they have in place are working. Um, other times, you know, we'll go through maybe a different attack path to somewhere else in the network and talk with them afterwards and they'll be like, yeah, we, we have no, they, they'd be flabbergasted because they, they would just say, we have no idea you were doing any of that. Um, we've clearly got some changes to make. And the, uh, you know, the penetration tests can help highlight those types of things. You know, really ultimately at the end of a penetration test, you're gonna get a, you know, a report, an in-depth re report of what happened and a conversation with, with the uh, penetration testers that did, did the work and you know, that document and that conversation a lot of times can be used to better align um, an organization's business leaders and security leaders to make sure they're all on the same page as far as, you know, how are we doing with our security posture now and what do we really need to do um, to move forward on the, to the next step. And that actual physical document that you've got in the conversation can really, can really help to met, blend those two worlds together, I think, so everyone's on the same page. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so Dylan, what, what type of insights, uh, I would love to get your perspective on this, uh, what type of insights should we expect to, a pen test to provide us? Yeah, so I mean, generally speaking, you know, and I don't want to regurgitate, you know, a little too much of what we've already talked about, um, but you're going to come away with a, a better understanding um, in your security gaps, right? The patch management, um, but more common nowadays, you know, I think customers walk away with a better understanding of what controls need to be tuned a little better, whether that's, you know, EDR. Um, and also understanding the limitations of the controls that they have in place, right? Um, because there are limitations and, and that may not be clear, you know, so, Sometimes, you know, a customer might be curious as to, you know, why didn't a certain product block, you know, a certain activity or get alerted on something. Um, and, you know, going down that path, you know, um, as Kyle had mentioned, you know, 
essentially establishing command and control, uh, you know, customers are very interested in that. So when you finally kind of get that foothold into a network, um, you know, uh, you know, for example, a common C2 channel might use uh, HTTP and they may have security controls, you know, such as proxies that, you know, only allow outbound traffic for various categorized domains and they might be doing SSL inspection, but attackers are already thinking about that and they're buying domains that are already categorized that hopefully get out. And they're doing, you know, buying domains that hopefully you know, aren't going through SSL inspection, things like uh, finance and, and healthcare domains. But there's also other ways to get outside the network, right? So we're still on that, that foothold because customers have, usually have a lot of questions about that. Um, and, you know, HTTP isn't the only protocol, right? So, I mean, there's DNS, um, there's also ICMP, right? So if you're allowing ICMP traffic outbound, you know, an ICMP is, is a viable C2 channel. Right? More than often, uh, if you want to stay under the radar, you usually stick with DNS though. Is, is this stuff that, like, I feel like automated testing should be finding a lot of this. Right. But I'm, the sense I'm kind of getting is maybe it's more intricate than that. So I'm, I'm kind of curious to know, because you mentioned earlier, I, th I think it was, uh, I actually think all of you have mentioned it at some point, you know, automated tool sets are only so effective, right? Like, why is that? Like, what's the difference between Cam going out and buying some tools, that even maybe even the same tools that you're using and running those tests versus you guys doing it? <laughs> Yeah, and there there is always that, right? These tools are readily available out there. Just like I could probably go and uh, you know buy all the the surgeons' tools and attempt an open heart surgery. Uh, Cam, I think you mentioned to me the other day anybody can buy a race car, right? But uh, you may not be a, a great driver once you hop into that. So uh, there is definitely a place for tools. There is a place for automation. Uh, I, I think everybody in IT and security these days is familiar with a vulnerability scanner, you know, whether it's Nessus or Qualys or Rapid7, uh, these scanners are very, very common. Uh, if you don't already own a scanner, uh, you should. Uh, our pen tests are not a replacement for doing good regular uh, monitoring and scanning and things like that that you can do with automation. Uh, we get asked a lot uh, when we sit down and talk with new clients or, uh, you know, just about anybody out there actually, you know, like, what tools do you use? You know, what, what are you guys using? And I, I laugh a little bit at that question, but I think it's also a, an awesome introduction to a discussion that needs to be had. And that's the fact that these tools are just that in the hands of a good experienced pen tester. Uh, they, they make you very efficient and very good at what you do. But uh, the reality is, is that, you know, just running automation against your systems to scan and look for vulnerabilities will find a lot, but it's not going to find the things that the pen tester is looking for. And I don't want to say the things that really matter because it all matters. Any exploitable, exploitable vulnerability matter, matters, but if you can buy a $2,000 copy of Nessus and find out uh, all that low, really, really low hanging fruit, then you should be doing that. In fact, you must be doing that. And the pen test is going to be everything that comes after that. So there's a build up here because this conversation, there's been a lot, you know, pen testers are ethical and we're super good and we're smarter than the script kitties and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's all probably very true. Right. But then there's also the, we went from back in the day, just exploiting patch exploits and all that kind of stuff to like social engineering and, I'm not going to lie. Like if I'm an organization, like how do I, know, how do I know what I want? Right. How do I, and more importantly, like how do I make sure that I'm asking the right things and the rules of engagement, so to speak, you know, align with my goals. Cause I probably don't know. Yeah. Yep. And I, I think I heard a couple different questions in there, you know, one of which is, is around this, you know, what should we do or what, you know, what, what's the scope ultimately of this engagement look like? And that varies uh, quite widely. So imagine a very, very large organization, you know, a Fortune 100, 
Uh, they're probably already doing dozens of different types of penetration tests during the year. They might be you know, doing external in one project, internal in another, their web and mobile applications in yet another, wireless could be another, even like physical, uh, you know, trying to break into facilities and data centers and things like that are scope options there. But a smaller organization, uh, you know, has a much uh, more manageable IT program and, and targets and things like that for an attacker or a pen tester to go after. So often in a smaller or mid-sized company, uh, we do it all in one engagement, where in a large organization, it might have been many little projects. Can I, can, sorry, can I interject for just a second here? Break into facilities? <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you mean? A little of that uh, from time to time. We'll call it a physical pen test or an on-site uh, penetration test. And uh, if you've watched the news recently, you've probably seen a, a couple uh, handsome penetration testers wearing uh, orange jail uh, uniforms. And, you know, I think that uh, you mentioned that word rules of engagement before. Uh, so physical pen testing is a thing. Breaking into buildings and facilities is something that uh, pen testers do from time to time. Uh, we're always going to be very careful here at Centercom. We, we uh, tend not to do these things after hours or when there's, uh, you know, building alarms set or even worse in this, uh, you know, scenario out in Iowa, it was, uh, you know, sheriffs in a courthouse. So uh, your, your odds of getting yourself in some real trouble uh, in physical testing uh, become a lot easier than in, in other types of testing, right? So just to confirm, you weren't one of those handsome pen testers in an orange uniform? Uh, not from pen testing, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 